It's Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Koha Kohila Hawkins, coming to you in unity with your body of priests, the seasoned servants of your last days, known to witness our great teacher, our pastor and overseer, the great Kohan, Yisrael Abel Hawkins, and thrown by the authority of our righteous high priest, Yashar our Messiah. Great Father, we do come before you this day, thanking you again, Father, for allowing us to be here at your great house, continuing in our training, Father Yahweh, to be a part of your family and a part of your administration. We ask that you will purify our hearts and our minds and allow us to continue to grow in unity so that we can usher in your soon coming kingdom and be a part of this great plan, Father, which will bring everlasting righteousness and peace. We bless you, we thank you, we praise you, and ask for your daily inspiration and protection both now and forever. In Yahshua Messiah's name, we do pray and ask all of these things. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Okay, today we're going to be starting on page 173. 173 in the eighth book of Israel, persecuted but not forsaken. Okay, and this is a uh, chapter 15, and this is uh, Yeshua's memorial. And the date of this sermon is uh, 41908. And if you're standing, you can uh, you can be seated wherever you're at. So this was Yeshua's memorial, 419, 2008. And of course, Pastor starts by saying you can be seated. Then he says, I think it's very brave of everyone to be here tonight. And so I wanted to remind you that um, this Yeshua's memorial was, um, this was the first Passover right after a uh, pastor was arrested in 2008, uh, second, uh, second moon 2008. And so um, if you remember that time period, it was a lot of different things going on and, you know, fear gripped a lot of people. And, um, and so pastor encourages everyone by saying, I think it's very brave of you to be here tonight to, uh, to reverence Yeshua. It says, Yahweh has prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies. The things that Satan is doing is meant, of course, to scare the people away from the house of Yahweh. So everything that the adversary is doing, everything that goes on out in the world, all of these different um, tactics that he has is to keep people from coming to Yahweh's great house. So in verse two, it says, I respect our savior greatly for what he did on this night, this night, 2000 years ago. And of course he was facing danger. His apostles, his students of course, uh, uh, the students of his were also facing danger. And Yeshua had already told the authorities, you can only do what Yahweh allows you, only what he allows you to do you can't go any further. And this is the great trust that that um, that Yeshua has in Father Yahweh, you know, that he had in him at this time. And um, and this was written, one of the reasons why this was written is to to give us the same um, the same courage. Because when you look at this, when you read it again, it says, You can only do what Yahweh allows you, only what he allows you to do. You can go no further. And remember, Yahweh promises his house protection. Okay, he promises us protection. And if we trust in Yahweh and we know that, look, nothing can take place unless Yahweh allows it, then we shouldn't be worried about the different things that's going to take place in the world. We should only do our part, right? We should do our part by bearing witness to these, uh, to these prophecies coming to pass. And the other part is actually developing the character of Yahweh that's necessary to inherit the kingdom. Okay, all of these other things, you know, we should be watching and paying attention to the signs of these times, Okay. And, and judging and choosing what we're going to do. It says, and you cannot sentence me, and this is Yeshua again saying, you cannot sentence me to anything unless Yahweh first agreed and it was prophesied that he would allow this. And of course, that's what we look at today. And remember, uh, remember this as things grow much worse in this world. I wanted to start a sermon tonight. It's a teaching. I can't finish it tonight, but I will try to finish it throughout the feast. If not, we will finish it after the feast and have it on record for you. But it's denying Yeshua Messiah. And the following is speaking of this, uh, this very thing, excuse me, and speaking of this very trying situation that we face today, but also what his disciples faced at that time. Okay, and um, most of the time, the, the tests and trials that we go through may seem really small, okay? Sometimes they seem really small, but when you're in situations like what Yeshua was faced with that night, like the uh, the apostles, you know, when your life is on the line, 
then Yahweh can see what we're really made of. Okay, Yahweh can see what we're what we're really made of, because again, when fear takes hold of you, you know, we start making poor. We can make poor choices, and that's why I really want to point out again what Pastor said at the very um, in his opening remarks. I think it's very brave of everyone to be here tonight. Okay, um, celebrating Yeshua's memorial, appreciating what Yeshua did for us to have the opportunity to be in Yahweh's house in these last days. Okay, and so without Yeshua's you know, courage and, and his knowledge of Yahweh, without his knowledge of the scriptures, we wouldn't have the opportunity to be here in Yahweh's house. So you know, it's, um, it's always a great thing to reflect on these things. And if you could go back and listen to this sermon and actually listen to um, pastors teaching, listen to how he's presenting the information. And um, when I was listening to it, you know, I can tell that, you know, um, this is probably one of the most, um, how should I say it, like um, memorable, the most um, emotional Yeshua's memorials for pastor because of the situation that he was going through at this time. Okay, I think that this situation allowed him to to gain a greater understanding of what Yeshua went through because he was going through it himself. And one of the things that really stand out to me in this whole ordeal is um, at the end of it all <clears throat> or towards the ending of it all, um, pastor had the opportunity to do exactly what Yeshua did. You know, when he spoke the words that Yeshua spoke or kept his mouth closed as it were okay that was an opportunity for him to you know to to be like Yahshua and and that's what he did he remained silent and in the presence of of his enemies you know and so every opportunity that every opportunity that pastor gets to to glorify Yahweh to to show his reverence and respect for our high priest he takes that opportunity okay and we should be doing the same things learning how to take these opportunities to reverence father Yahweh and to show show him honor and glory you know, through these teachings, you know, through the things that we learn from pastor, okay? Because we can't do it without a teacher. We wouldn't even know what to do without our teacher. And so continuing on here, uh, pastor wants to get it in our minds um, what these men were facing, this time of trouble that these men were facing. And he says, imagine um, what they were going through. You know, Yeshua knew exactly what was going to take place this night because of what was written in the scriptures. And um, and remember, he was going to the men and he was saying, can you not stay awake? You know, why are you sleeping? And they kept falling asleep, you know, but Yeshua knew what was about to come upon him and these men. And pastor wants us to know, look, you know, in these situations, okay, in these types of situations, what are you going to do? He's preparing us for these things. Okay, are you going to run or are you going to stand up for righteousness? Okay. What are you going to do? Because time of the, this is the worst time of trouble, okay, in this time period, and it's only going to get worse. And so if we're fearful now, you know, we better start studying. We better start doing the things that's necessary to trust, to learn, to truly put our trust in Yahweh, because there's no protection outside of knowing Yahweh, outside of doing exactly what Yahweh tells us to do, okay? So here, uh, let me read verse 4. If you could imagine 12 disciples who had been with him all this time, and then they all turned on him and deny him. Now, of course, that looks bad. But if you remember what Yeshua said to Kepha, he said, when you are converted, this was after his resurrection, he said, when you are converted, strengthen your brothers. Okay, strengthen your brothers, which meant that none of these disciples at that time were converted. They were baptized and trained and the things they, they went through up until that point um, and the point where they finally reached the point of con uh, conversion, they were ready as Yeshua was to die. So for a long time, the men, they followed Yeshua. Okay, they followed Yeshua. They were, they were joyful. They were learning the ways of Yahweh. But Yeshua shows that they weren't converted at that time. They were fearful. Okay, they denied Yeshua. They turned from him. Um... But when again, when Yahweh was done with them, okay, when they when Yahweh was done with them, once they truly converted to the way of Yahweh, you know, and Pastor goes on and he shows us in the next paragraph how again Kepha didn't want to be nailed the way that Yeshua was nailed to the stake. Okay, and this is what Pastor's talking about in verse five here. And he's he can barely even get through it. Okay, he can barely even get through it. He's crying here, just knowing 
how much these men overcame and and um and what they were looking forward to and what they were willing to do to show Yahweh that they weren't the same men that um that they were when they were first called. They improved, they grew in the way of Yahweh. Okay. And this is one of the things that Keeper wanted to show Yahweh. Look, Father Yahweh, I understand these things now. I'm willing to go through this to prove to you that you can trust me. Okay, I trust you, Yahweh. I know that there's a place for me in your kingdom. Okay, I know that there's a place for you in your kingdom. You can trust me, Yahweh, to preach this message. Okay, you can trust me to preach this message. And that's why we're here in these last days, trying to prove to Yahweh that he can trust us with these words. Okay, these are words that guard life. These are the words to life. And Yahweh needs to be able to trust us to present this information. And if we can't present, present this information the way that it's given to us, then Yahweh can't trust us, okay? And this is what we have to understand, okay? We're trying to show Yahweh that he can trust us. Well, at the same time, he's showing us <laughs> that we can trust him, okay? He's showing us that we can trust him, but we have to know what's in the scriptures. Remember, Yeshua said, you know, you are deceived because you don't know what's in the scriptures. How can you prove Yahweh if you don't know what Yahweh says? You have to know what Yahweh says, and then you can say, oh, this is exactly what, it, oh, oh. Oh, and then you'll start making these connections and you will grow in Yahweh. But if you're not studying, if you're not reading, if you're not listening to, to Yahweh's house, you're not going to know what to look for. Okay, there's no protection outside of Yahweh's house. I want to skip ahead a little bit here. Um, pastor's telling everyone to go to their books of Yahweh, and he's, he's in Luke 12 here. So I'm going to start in verse, uh, let me start in verse 7. If you have your books of Yahweh, I would like, you to follow with me. If you turn to Luke 12, keep these, th keep those things in mind. Keep them in mind as you study the apostles, uh, as you study the apostles' work and the great work that they did, which they did a tremendous, a tremendous work at that time. And he goes on and shows how uh, the apostles uh, wrote down uh, the second volume of the book of Yahweh and how they had these, um, these copies spread out um, so that we can have this collection of works in these last days so that we can have the instructions from Yahweh. Okay, in verse 10 it says, well, in Luke 12, 9, he says, but he who denies me before men will be denied before the Malachim of Yahweh, that is, the messengers of Yahweh, that he himself will deny them. Let's go over Let's go over to our work here in Revelations 3 because Yahshua is head over this work. He is the high priest and king over this work that we're now doing in these last days. And in fact, we're bringing forth the message of Yahshua to the world at this time, which destroys their cover for sins. And it not only destroys their cover, it's showing the prophecies as to what is going to take place that is caused by the world and its sins. This is the same work, the same work, the same teaching. This was the work that he spoke of, as, uh, as we'll cover much more in this feast later about the work and the works. But there we see the Philadelphia group in verse 7. And this is Revelations 3, 7. And of course, we're facing a time of trouble we're facing a time where, you know, most people as worldly preachers have already done in the face of danger or the face of threats. They will not come and continue to do the work that Yahweh assigns his house to do. In fact, they have proven this. They have proven that they are not the strong or they're not that strong in their faith. And of course, their love, as Yahweh said, wax cold in the face of danger as sin increased so when fear uh, when fear kicks in when there's a when there's danger you know people kind of cower and they hide okay they don't stand up and do what's right but you won't have that problem here in Yahweh's house okay you will not have that problem here at Yahweh's house Yahweh's priest Yahweh's people will stand up and teach righteousness no matter what okay that's what this house was established to do to bring forth the message of Yahweh in these last days regardless to how dangerous things are in the world, okay? Um, that's a promise given from Yahweh, okay? There's always going to remain a teacher of righteousness from now on, okay? This light will never go out. Take a look at uh, verse 15. 
verse 15, it says, Revelations 3, 7, And to the Malik, the messenger of the congregation of the house of Yahweh at, at Philadelphia, write, These things, Philadelphia, okay, these things. So Philadelphia means, of course, true brotherly love. True brotherly love that is taught in keeping the Sabbath as Yeshua keeps the Sabbath and as Yahweh keeps the Sabbath. And that's where you prove true brotherly love. Not only that, but obedience to the Father in heaven who gave the Holy Scriptures uh, to begin with. And so here's a key right here. Okay, here's a, here's a key. It says, um, Philadelphia means true brotherly love. And then it says, this is where Yeshua um, taught the keeping of the Sabbath. You know, and it teaches us how to keep the Sabbath like Yeshua uh, keeps the Sabbath and how Yahweh keeps the Sabbath. Okay, that's where you prove true brotherly love. Brotherly love. Then the next verse says, uh, these things says he who is holy, says notice, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David. These same words were used by Yeshua when he said, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Okay, he who is without sin, cast, let him cast the first stone. Let him judge, but you know, these life and death matters. Okay, and at this time, no one was capable of judging life or death matters. Only Yeshua was without sin. But at the house of Yahweh, we're being taught to become completely righteous, to, uh, to become completely holy, just like Yeshua is, just like Yahweh is. But he says, he who has the key, to, key of David. Now, one of the things about David, one of the things about David, and I'm thinking about this because um, the verse right above it, it talks about true brotherly love. Okay, true brotherly love. And then Pastor mentions um, David here. And so I, I was thinking about the relationship that David had with Jonathan. Okay, the relationship that David had with Jonathan. And um, in 2 Samuel... Second Samuel. Chapter one. Second Samuel, chapter one. In verse 26. And this is after um, Jonathan and um, King Saul were were murdered. It says, I grieve for you, my brother, Jonathan. You were very dear to me. Your love to me was wonderful surpassing the love of women. Okay, so Jonathan and David, like it says here, I grieve for you, my brother Jonathan. Jonathan and David had an awesome relationship, you know, to the point where Yahweh made mention of their friendship, their brotherly love for one another in the scriptures so that we can pay attention to this, okay? Jonathan and David, they were so close that Jonathan saw the acts of his father and realized that, okay, this is not right. Okay, these things that my father is conspiring is not right. And so there was many a times when Jonathan warned David and saved David's life. So when you think about this, and when you look at the plan of Yahweh, you can look at their friendship, okay, their brother, the brotherly love that they have for one another. And Yeshua came from David's lineage. So this friendship, the, these brothers actually saved the plan of Yahweh. Okay, when you can look at What's going on between these two men here, these brothers here that had this care and concern for one another? Yeshua's bloodline, Yeshua came from David. If, da if Jonathan didn't take care of David and look out for David, David wouldn't have been alive. David would have been murdered by Shaul, you know, a long time ago, right? But there was care and concern here, okay? Jonathan was his brother's keeper, okay? Jonathan was his brother's keeper. He took care of David. They took care of each other, right? And because of that, David was alive to bring forth Yeshua, and Yeshua lived to the point where now we have an opportunity for life, okay? Now, there's another situation with David where he didn't show the same care and concern for someone. He didn't treat someone the same way that he treated um, Jonathan, okay? And I'm speaking about Uriah the Hittite, okay? And because he didn't treat this other man, he didn't treat his brother the same way that he treated Jonathan, you know, David lost a lot of, um, uh, he lost the position of Yahweh's kingdom. He lost the priesthood, okay? And the thing that David did at that time displeased Yahweh, okay? And this is a great lesson for us because we can't just pick and choose who we want to show brotherly love to, 
Okay, we can't pick and choose. Okay, we can't. We have to show care and concern for all life. Okay, everyone has a right to life. Everyone, or else we'll be doing the same thing here. But praise Yahweh that King David repented of what he did to uh, to bro his brother Uriah. Praise Yahweh, he repented for that, right? But it's a great example for us to realize we cannot pick and choose who we're going to show kindness to, who we're going to show love to. Because Yeshua said, you will, they will know you're my disciples by the way that you show love to one another. Not by the way you pick and choose who you want to show love to. Okay, we can easily disqualify ourselves from the kingdom if we start picking and choosing. Okay, we have to value and guard all life. All life was created by Yahweh. Okay, and again it says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Okay, we all have flaws and we all should be encouraging one another on towards perfect and righteous works. Exactly what the scriptures teaches us to do. But continuing on here, he who is true, this is verse 17 on page 173. He who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. I know your works. In fact, he's the high priest over this work, high priest and king over this work. I know your works, and behold, I have set before you an open door. It is me who has set before you this open door, and no man can shut it. You have a little strength, very little strength, and have kept my word and have not denied my name. And he says here that the very fact that you are here tonight is the fact that you are not denying his name. Praise Yahweh. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, down in verse 20. It says, and of course, this was the turning point. The truth. Well, let me back up a little bit, because uh, Pastor goes on and he talks about uh, how Yeshua's name and Yahweh's name is going to be hated throughout all the earth, uh, throughout all the world. And it says they hated both me and my father. They, they, um, they just hate the teachings of Yahweh's laws. You know, you can see that, you know, on the internet how much they hate these teachings, and it's amazing because these are the only teachings. That, that actually teach peace, you know, teaches people to, to dress modestly, you know, to, to eliminate um, these un, unlawful lusts for one another, to, to eat clean and, and healthy food and to stay away from those things which causes the confusion in the mind, you know, to, to raise your children, uh, to show respect for one another, to respect authority, you know, but we're hated. It's, uh, it's pretty, you know, amazing when you think about it. But the scripture says that the righteous will be counted as mad, you know. So here's another way that Father Yahweh's, proves that he knows what he's talking about. You want to keep these laws? You're crazy. You know, do you know how many cartoons come on Saturday? I'm not about to sit in the building and, and listen to scriptures. I'm about to watch TV, you know, Kung Fu theater at 12 o'clock. You know, nobody wants to sit and listen to the scriptures, right? Well, you have to be called by Yahweh. Okay. You have to desire this above all else. So here, um, and of course, verse 20, and of course, this was the turning point, the true test in these days where the love the love of the scriptures and the love for the laws as the preachers were holding up their Bibles all over the world. It doesn't say all over the world. <laughs> oh, let's see, all up over the United States and proclaiming how much they love these laws and how much they love the Bible. Well, you soon see their love. You saw how their love grew cold as Hollywood took over the teachings. But Yeshua said, you have not denied my name. Speaking of the house of Yahweh, who continues to come here for training, learning how to truly show reverence for Yahweh in this way. Um, Pastor goes on and he's talking about, um, he was showing how the world will see how Yeshua loved us because of the things that we're doing. Right now, they don't see it. Right now, we're hated. Right now, we're despised. Right now, we're a, we're a crazy cult that have no idea what we're doing and God's going to kill us, right? But when it's all said and done, okay, Yeshua shows that, um, the scripture shows that the whole world, all these governments are, gonna, are going to uh, submit to the governing authority of the house of Yahweh. They're going to follow these teachings. They're going to see that there's no other way to have peace unless we follow Yahweh's administration, right? But right now, the only thing we're doing, we're continuing to teach. We're continuing to, to bring forth this information so that, you know, everyone can have an opportunity to be a part of Yahweh's kingdom. OK, and right now, everyone who is called has an opportunity to be a priest in Yahweh's house, a priest or a priestess. Everyone has that opportunity, but we have to make those choices to, you know, to choose righteousness so that we can qualify for those things. 
Um, Pastor goes on, he talks about how a lot of the test is going to come through um, through our families, okay? Being, you know, having to choose between standing up for what's right, Yahweh's way, or being pulled back into the world because of, you know, mother, father, brother, sister, grandma, granddad, so on and so forth, okay? And he's showing that um, Yeshua said, look, I didn't come to bring peace, but a separation, okay? Not that Yeshua wants to divide people up, but Yeshua knows, Yahweh knows that this information is going to drive a wedge between people, okay? If you're called by Yahweh and you're choosing uh, to separate from, you know, the, the things that the scriptures condemn like Christmas, okay? Christmas is condemned in the scriptures. Easter is condemned in the scriptures. Uh, Valentine's, all of these things are condemned in the scriptures. So when you separate from these things, you know, the people that you used to hang around, they're going to come against you. So this is a test. What are you going to do? Say, well, I want to be loved by my friends and family, so I'm going to continue to do those things which Yahweh does not approve of? Or, well, we have nothing in common. Just like the scripture says, how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? You know, I love y'all. You know, y'all have an opportunity one day, but right now I have to accept this calling and go and make myself like Yahweh. Okay, that's a true test. And when we do those things, it's, it's pleasing to Yahweh. That's a pleasing sacrifice to Yahweh. And this is what he says, you know, you know, become living sacrifices, living offerings, changing your life, you know, from evil to righteous, okay? Passing from death to life and then being an example of what the way the words of Yahweh can do for a person. You know, Yeshua was the ultimate result of the keeping of Yahweh's laws. He's the ultimate result. Okay, and we can follow that example and become just like Yeshua, representing Yahweh's and being a part of Yahweh's family. Okay, representing Yahweh everywhere we go. Okay, this is this is part of the plan. This is part of the calling. Um, continuing on here, a pastor says here, like at the bottom of verse twenty, I think that's twenty-four. He says, "Hold fast." Well, he says, "Be strong as Kepha was when he died. Hold fast. That's what you have. That no man take your crown." Okay, because remember, you have a little strength, okay? You have a little strength, but you can build your house, okay? You can build your house to the point where it will not be destroyed by the adversary. Build a, have a strong foundation and use strong material, okay? Use strong material. The house of Yahweh has excellent material, okay, so that you can fortify your house so that it will not be destroyed by the adversary, okay? But the way that you build your house is going to be up to you. How much effort you put into it, how much detail you put into it, it's going to be up to you. Now, verse 34 says, do not think that I've come to send peace to the earth. And this is what we were just talking about, okay? He didn't come to send peace, but he came to call people out, okay? Are you going to continue to remain in this group and continue to do evil things, or are you going to separate from that, okay? What are you going to do? And then uh, verse 34, a man's enemies will be those of his own house. Okay, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Okay, no, they won't make it into the kingdom. They won't make it into this service, this great service that Yahweh has promised us, promised those who will be tested at this time and prove themselves true. Verse 36, but it is a proving ground. I've come to test you, he said. Fear not, but Yahweh has come to test you to see if you do qualify for his kingdom. And you can, everyone has, everyone he has called actually, and you can, everyone he has called, it's actually possible for you to make it into the kingdom right now. Okay. Everyone is possible for everyone to make it into the kingdom right now. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. These are the tests. These are the tests that, that are put before you. I'm going to read one more thing here. Um, cause pastor goes on and he explains how whatever job we're given in the work, because again, the work we're proving ourselves to Yahweh, whatever it is that he gives us, you know, we have to do it with all of our might. You know, the, the various things that we do is part of our training, learning how to get along with one another. Okay. Yahweh doesn't need us, you know, cutting grass all the time. Okay. That's not the purpose for the work. Now, when you're cutting grass with your brother who you don't get along with, Oh, yeah, you're going to be cutting grass for years until you learn to love each other, okay? If you're painting and you can't stand your brother, oh, you're going to be painting for years until you learn to love your brother, okay? No matter where you go, if you're not learning how to overcome whatever differences that we have with one another, whatever 
problems that we have within ourselves that Yahweh's showing us that we have, we're going to be, no matter where we go in the work, no matter where we go in the world, that's always going to be with us unless we fix it. It's not your brother's problem that you get angry. It's your problem. Fix it. Okay? It's not your brother's problem that you're stubborn. You're stubborn. Fix it. Yahweh's showing you what issues you have, but he might be allowing your brother you know, to work with you so that you can see that you have a problem. Your brother doesn't have a problem. You have a problem. Okay. And if everyone looks at the situations like that, we can fix our problems and we can all get into the kingdom together and rejoice throughout all of eternity. Um, Yahweh bless your understanding. Wherever you're at, if you please stand, I'll turn it over to the next uh, priest, the great Kahan, Matithia Hawkins. Praise Yahweh. Shalom, great men of Yahweh. You can be seated if you're standing. I apologize, I'm not used to teaching an empty sanctuary here, but I'll try to do the best I can. So we're going to be continuing on here where the great Khan Kohilath left off. In the 8th book of Israel, part 1, chapter 15, and we're going to be picking up on page 176, continuing to cover the sermon that Pastor gave on Yeshua's memorial and um, here recently, you know, we've had the great privilege here to be listening on the 88.9 radio to the, you know, uh, a bunch of many years of Yeshua's memorial sermons. And, you know, some of these sermons are like, I mean, they're, you know, all of it's golden oil, but some of these things are like jarfuls of golden oil at a time. Now I'm just going to jump back just a little bit here on page 175, where pastor started verse 52 and he was reading here and he says, or becomes a part of the team that makes it possible for you to get the blood of Yeshua or the representation of the blood of Yeshua or the representation of the body of Yeshua. Okay, because he was reading here, um, he was reading here in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 42 about whoever gives the cup of wine. And Pastor says, or becomes a part of the team that makes it possible, you know, because it takes a team to get the work done. You know, this is why Yahweh has a body, a house you know, which is made up of many members, different people doing their parts to get the work done, to be a part of this team and bringing forth uh, this great message of the kingdom to this dying world and helping support the witness. He says, continue on in verse 52, the representation of the body of Yeshua, this is at the top of the page of 176 on the left-hand side, which you're going to get here tonight, saying to Yahweh, yes, I take of his life unto me. Yes, I take his body into mine. I am willing, yes, I am willing to put aside everything except your laws, except your team. You know, so unlike Christianity, you know, where they 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 partake of different uh, things at different times of the years, and um, they'll they'll think that they're actually eating a a dead body. When we when we eat the bread and drink the wine at Yeshua's memorial, you know, we're agreeing to be a servant like Yeshua was. And, and I like how Pastor put it right here where he says, yes, I take his body into mine. I am willing, yes, I am willing to put aside everything except your laws, except your team. You know, and I highlighted that there about put aside everything because, didn't highlight, I'm sorry, I underlined it. I'm getting the wrong classes mixed up here. Underlined here where it says put aside everything because, you know, we all have different, we have different things that come up on a daily basis, you know, our different tests and trials or the different, um, you know, daily grind where we face different issues and we have to be willing to put aside everything of, of you know, whether it's our, our own things, our own business or, you know, our own wants or our own desires, our own thoughts, put aside everything except Yahweh's laws and accept his team, this administration, this great house of Yahweh to make sure that we're being a servant to others and actually building up the great house of Yahweh and not getting caught in our own lust, our own desires, our own uh, mindset or mentality. You know, and it, it's tough. At times, man, you really, you really do have to um, take a, a lot of extra time to stop and think, to examine and to realize, um, to realize where it is that we can be a better part of this team, a part of this administration, being this representation of the body of Yeshua. 
Continuing on here in verse 53, he continues reading in Matthew 10, 42, and whoever gives the cup of wine of life, this wine of life to one of these little ones, only through the authority of a disciple, that's doing it. Truly I say to you, he will not lose his reward. And look what he says. Whoever does what he is assigned to do. Whoever does what he is assigned to do. Okay, this is how you give this cup of the wine of life to these little ones. Doing what we're assigned to do. Standing in our place. You know, fulfilling our job, our task, the things that we've been assigned to do. And our assignments, they come from the great house of Yahweh. You know, you, you get... Assignments from the house of Yahweh, from, from your counselors or your supervisors or the offices. You know, this is where your assignments come from. Let's tone over, Pastor says, just one more scripture. And this is in Matthew 25 and start with verse 31. And I thought it was kind of funny because we won't be able to go through all the scriptures here, but he goes through several scriptures, you know, and, and several different books. And it's hard. It's just like uh, Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 28, verse 10. It'll be precept upon precept and line upon line, here a little and there a little. You know, it's hard just to to cover this this great message when you watch Pastor teaches. It's hard for him just to cover it in one little one little verse here. But I think he was just trying to he was trying to keep us uh, alert and aware that we were getting closer to the end of this was uh, Yeshua's memorial and getting ready to partake of the uh, service there. Whoever takes this yoke upon them yokes himself to this team. In verse 55, he says, and doesn't deny his name by running scared, but keeps the laws of Yahweh, as Yahweh says, in the place where I choose to place my name. I would that I had all of this on television. I would have had it on television for a month before the feast, but Yahweh opens the doors. In Matthew 25, 31, he says, and I'm not at all saying Yahweh is wrong. It's just that my desire... And, and he didn't start reading the scripture. He was just talking about having this on television playing a month before feast. It's just that my desire would be that everyone in the world would know this sermon right now in the world. But Yahweh knows what he is doing. And sometimes I don't. And pastor's laughing here. You know, and, and uh, it is great. You know, this sermon was given 419, 2008. It is great the many advances we've had in technology. You know, they have their glitches here and there. But the, the many advances we've had in technology where we're able, you know, we're at a time period where we're able to, uh, no matter where we're at on the face of the earth, no matter what restrictions man might place on us, we're able to, to learn and to uh, acquire this knowledge as it's taking place, as pastors pouring out this golden oil. And that's, that's a great blessing, you know, for, for especially for those who are um, stuck in places where they don't you know, desire to be and, and still waiting for Yahweh's great deliverance. And, and, and that's going to be a glorious thing to see. But it's, it's amazing to be able to see how much we can keep up with what pastor's teaching. But I do, and you know, it does, um, you know, it brings to mind what he's talked about where he says, you know, when he gets the gifts of spirit holy, he'll just have to think something. And then we will actually have that, you know, we'll have that teaching you know, because he'll send it out to us, you know, it'll be there and be available. So when he, he, he could think, when he's thinking about this sermon, we'll kind of get it. And then when he speaks it, then we'll get it again, you know. So one day, this this will come to pass one day where we're going to be able to hear these things before they're actually even spoken, you know, to us. But but what he said there is, but Yahweh knows what he's doing, and sometimes I don't. You know, and, and that's something we have to always pay attention to, that Yahweh knows what he's doing. You know, Yahweh is leading and guiding his house. You know, Pastor's funny here. He's, he's laughing. He's funny. He says, he says, sometimes he don't, but no, Pastor does know what he's doing. You know, and Yahweh is leading and guiding him. You know, we have to learn to humble ourselves to do as we just read up there, do whatever we're assigned to do. In verse 53, you know, partake of this cup of wine to be a part of this body of Yeshua. Now, in verse 57 here on page 176, eighth book of Israel, part one, in Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man comes in his glory with all his holy Malachim, that is all his holy messengers, with them, he will sit upon the throne of his glory. And Matthew 25, 32, and before him will be gathered all peoples, and he will separate them one from another, just as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. Now here is Yeshua, Pastor says. He's already given you judgments here, his judgments, his decision, what he is going to go by. He and the messengers. 
And then in Matthew 25, 33, and he will set the sheep, the righteous ones, on his right hand. What qualifies that word righteous right there that we have added there, you know? There are a lot of things qualified for that word righteous. And I hope you've got all that in mind. And, and um, you know, we won't be able to cover in depth, of course, because time's flying way by, like always. But if, if you will go and read, you know, we've been having a great opportunity here to do a little more reading, uh, especially, you know, those who live in this area because of the... Uh, um, lack of, you know, being able to actually come here and gather for all the different classes and stuff. But if you go back and you read in the usual says.com and you type in the search bar uh, to search the book of Israel's and you search for left hand of Yahweh, left hand of Yahweh. And in, um, in the seventh book of Israel, part one, chapter 21, verse 137, which is, there's a lot of sermons that cover where Pastor talked about the subject of the left hand of Yahweh. But in the seventh book, Israel, part one, chapter 21, verse 137, he, he specifically mentioned how Yeshua sits at Yahweh's right hand, you know, and that we can't be first. He was first begotten of many brothers, you know, but our work, this last day's work is actually going to be set at Yahweh's left hand, you know, and, um, and if you remember, when you read through a lot of those sermons on usual says, you'll see where pastor talks about how Yahweh is going to take pastor. You know, he's going to be on the left hand of Yahweh and Yahweh is going to take pastor by his right hand. Because if you're standing on someone's, you know, left side and they grab hold of your hand, they're going to be grabbing your right hand. Um, and so, you know, when you read here in Matthew 25, 33, it says he will set the sheep, the righteous on his right hand. You know, and we, and we have the great blessing of being able to be set on pastor's right hand, you know, which Yahweh is going to take hold of this, this uh, great work that is the work of usual Abel Hawkins, the seventh messenger, the last Malik. Now, continuing on in verse 59 here, he says, yes, it's keeping the laws. And he's talking about righteous. Yes, it's keeping Yahweh's laws, but, okay, so there's a little more than just keeping the laws, right? But it's also being a part of the team who doesn't deny the Savior, doesn't deny the Savior as the apostles denied him that night. You know, as Moshe told the people in Exodus 20, verse 20, see, I have come to test and to prove you to see where your heart would be. You know, um, learning, learning the teachings of Yahweh's house, learning Yahweh's laws is a part of it, you know, but actually uh, joining to this team and tethering yourself to this team and 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 volunteering and and offering your help, you know, call in the office and find out what place you can you can help in or or what place you can stand in, what assignments there might be for you, you know, and that that's not just for here uh, in the great city of Israel, but that's worldwide, you know, where there's assignments and jobs for people to do in all their different areas. But that's the part of being righteous, okay? That word righteous, those righteous sheep who will be placed on his right hand okay keeping Yahweh's laws is a part of it but it's also being a part of the team who doesn't deny the savior he doesn't deny the savior you know because remember what it says about he who denies me I will I will also deny him you know and this this sermon was given shortly after there was some extreme persecution there's about two months there after pastor was arrested back in 2008 and and um you know, there was a test for many. It was a test for many of, of what they would stand for, you know, and, and whether they would uh, run in fear or, or turn or whether they would continue forth and doing the great work of Yahweh and, and being a part of this great team. And like Pastor said, it wasn't his test. It was our test. You know, it wasn't his test. It was our test because he, he knew he knew he had been keeping Yahweh's laws and he hadn't broken Yahweh's laws, you know, like he uh, he spoke there on the news you know, at least I know I haven't sinned, you know, so he knew that this was a part of Yahweh's plan, you know, and it was to see how we would respond, what we would do. And and many, many ran and they turned, you know, and they, you know, uh, uh, ran in, in, in shame, you know, but the great, the great house of Yahweh and this great administration that he's placed here at the city of Israel and all those who are gathered together, either through broadcast or who come and keep the feast with us, you know, many, 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 many groups, and, and members and people stood with the witness, Yisrael. But after, okay, just go back a little bit here. He says, 
It's also being a part of the team who doesn't deny the Savior. Doesn't deny the Savior as the apostles denied him that night. But after they were converted, they never denied him after that, right up to the death. And we have records of 11 of the 12 deaths of the apostles at the hands of the enemy. Read Fox's Books of Martyrs. Fox's Book of Martyrs, if you want to prove that, okay? So we have to remember, do not deny the Savior. You know, we can't, we can't deny the Savior, okay? After they were converted, the apostles never denied him again. You know, and the same holds true for the great house of Yahweh, this great work that Yahweh is doing, and the witness Israel, you know, because uh, persecution is something that will probably, it's, it's, it's at least from what I've witnessed, persecution is nothing that just goes away. You know, it kind of calms down for a little while, but it always raises its ugly head because of the hatred that Satan and her followers have for this great work and the and the success that it's doing. You know, so as that great house of Yahweh grows and it and it, it it's able to reach new heights, you know, then the persecution usually will kick up and there'll be, you know, little things that occur here and there. You know, and it, and it's also excellent because it gives us an opportunity to prove ourselves to be willing to stand with the witness usual, you know, to be to be able to stand up for the house of Yahweh, not be afraid when someone says, you know, are you a member of the house of Yahweh? Are you one of those Yahwehs? You know, where you can you can be joyful to say, yes, I am. You know, I am a member of the house of Yahweh. You know, and and uh, a lot of times, you know, people will ask that question. And they might ask it in a funny voice or. You know, like they're digging for something. But a lot of times they'll say, oh, OK. You know, they, they really don't have a whole lot more to say. And, you know, every once in a while they might ask some questions. But you can always, you know, you're always able to do just like Pastor said, you direct them back to the name of Yahweh and the Sabbath. You know, we 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 use we're the only organization on the face of the earth using the Heavenly Father's name and that are keeping his Sabbath day holy. You know, you should go to Yahweh dot com and you can you can check it out, you know, and, and, and that's all you really got to do. Now, continuing on here. On page 177, in verse 83, the top right-hand corner, pastor says, In 1 Corinthians, we're nearing the last part of the age where we're actually going to be doing this with Yeshua himself very soon. Okay, because remember Yeshua talked about this memorial. You know, this would be something forever that we would that we would uh, remember. You know, this memorial for Yeshua and then also for Nora. This is 1 Corinthians 11, starting at verse 20. It says, Therefore, when you come together into one place, it's not to eat Yeshua's memorial. For in eating, each one of you goes ahead without waiting for anyone else. One remains hungry, another one is drunken. These were not being a part of the team, but neither were they converted. And of course, teaching is what brought them in, and teaching is what perfected them. Be a teacher. Learn to be a teacher. That's why we have the enormous wealth of knowledge from the great house of Yahweh. You know, yeah, there's there's daily chores and there's all the different uh, tasks that have to take place on a daily basis. But one thing that's always uh, been here before we were here, you know, I know way before I was here and, and, you know, I know many were here well before me, but before anyone was here, one thing that was coming forth from the house of Yahweh was the amount of knowledge because pastor was writing and he was teaching. Remember he talked about with the mark of the beast, how he wrote on it for several years. He wrote, he was writing that book and putting it together before he ever published it. You know, so pastor's been here before anyone and he's been teaching. He's been bringing forth and setting up the availability for us to learn how to be teachers, giving us the knowledge that we need you know, and, and the wisdom that goes with that knowledge and how to apply it in our day-to-day -day lives. So what he said here is, of course, teaching is what brought them in, is teaching what is perfecting them. Be a teacher. Learn to be a teacher. Remember he said, when you stop sinning yourself, or, you, or when you teach others to stop sinning, you'll stop sinning yourself. You know, so the more you strive to be a teacher, and you might, you know, possibly, you know, you're uh, in your own country, you know, you're you're one of, of, of uh, the only members there in that country or nation or state or, you know, house or dwelling or tent or whatever it might be. And you think, well, who am I going to teach? You know, well, we can teach ourselves. You know, we can teach ourselves a lot of things from applying what pastor teaches us. You know, when you study his words, yeah, it teaches you a lot of things and you're able to, you're able to build that in your mind. But also you teach those who are around you, you know, those who aren't called out at this time, those who might be a part of the two billion or about, might be a part of the uh, group that Yahweh's calling out in these last days here, you know, giving an opportunity to be a part of his royal priesthood. 
but be a teacher, learn to be a teacher, you know, and the nervousness of teaching, you know, men, that that's something that, you know, it, it, uh, it doesn't seem to pass away. <laughs> that's, we're all nervous about getting up and teaching, you know, especially uh, standing before the great saints of Yahweh, great men in Yahweh's house. I was actually a little more nervous about teaching this empty sanctuary here, but, you know, coming and teaching when it's full and all you are in here, you know, it is it is a little nerve wracking, but you can get past that. You know, we even have classes that help us get through those things with the speech classes and the New World Training Center. You know, we're able to actually work through those things so that we can get past that. I mean, I think that's a normal, you know, uh, fear that's within our carnal mind, you know, or, or our, our mindset or it just seems to be, you know, a lot of people have a um, nervousness about getting in front of others and, and, and teaching, but you know, here at the House of Yahweh, this is what we're training to do, to be teachers, you know, and, and so that's why there's all the different opportunities. You, you got to continue to get involved with these things and the classes and the workshops and the services and, and, and being ready to be a teacher, you know, and sometimes when you're studying, you go over things and you might come across some interesting things and you, know, you might, you might find if you tell the priest or pastor about it, they might say, well, why don't you give a sermon on that? You know, and what, what, what me? You give a sermon on that? No, no way. <laughs> But, you know, be ready to be a teacher because this is what we're training to do, you know. And um, even if you get up here and you pass out, you know, we'll have someone to assist you. Get back to your feet, get some cold water, and you'll be right back at it. So no worries. Now, continuing in verse 86, Pastor says here, when something is going wrong, it's either one of two things. One, they're rebellious, or the other, they have not been taught. You can weigh each problem. Weigh each problem for yourself and know where the problem lies. All right, so you're having issues, you know, in dealing with, um, you know, your brother or um, your neighbor, you know, or your children or your boss or your supervisor or your employer, you know, or dealing with yourself. You know, look at that. One, we're either rebellious or two, we haven't been taught, you know. So a lot of times we have to be willing to do that, that great three-letter word. You know, we got a couple of bad three-letter words we don't want to say these days and last days, but the great three-letter word of ask. You know, don't be afraid to ask. A-S-K. Call your counselors, you know, call the house of Yahweh, ask questions so that you can be able to make sure you have the knowledge that you need, the information, you can educate yourself and all the facts to be able to make a right choice. Okay. To be able to weigh these problems and to be able to get through them because we don't want to be rebellious, you know, and, and we don't want to be ignorant neither. We don't want to be unlearned and ignorant. So, when things are going wrong, one of two things is occurring. Either we're rebellious or we haven't been taught. You know, and that's on us. You know, that's on us if we're rebellious. Well, we, we got to really, you know, eat more of that butter and honey like the priest was talking about on first day night. You know, we have to really examine ourselves, you know, seek heavy, um, seek diligently the priest and, and ask for help and, and explain where you're having troubles and, you know, ask how to work through these situations, you know. But if it's that we don't know, that we haven't been educated, you know, that's not that's not the house of Yahweh's fault. The education is there. Somehow we must have just missed something. So we need to just ask again. You know, don't expect that, well, well, someone should have told me, you know, someone should have told me if this thing was clean or this thing was not clean. No, it's better to be uh, be safe than be sorry. You know, if, if uh, you can't find something in the clean and acceptable book, you know, then call the office, you know, and find out if something is clean or acceptable and they'll get back to you. And until then, you know, go with something that you know is clean, something that's in the book. Continuing here, um, we're going to go over here to page 178. This time is running faster than all the people that ran out of the sanctuary when I came in here. No, I'm kidding. There's no, <laughs> there was hardly no one in the sanctuary except the guys that turn on the lights and open the doors and turn on the speakers and the microphone. On page 178 and verse 94, and pastor's reading here in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 29, and we're just going to go up to verse 28 where he says, but let a man examine himself and let him become a part of the team. So you see pastors really pushing being a part of the team. Let a man examine himself and be become a part of the team. You know, and when you, um, when you put forth an effort in being part of the team, expect that you're going to have tests and trials. You know, it's not going to be that that rose bed that pastor talked about. Yahweh didn't call us here for some rose bed. No, you're going to have tests and trials. You know, that's a part of being a part of the team. You know, learn how to get through those tests and trials 
so you can strengthen your character. You know, don't don't become discouraged and say, well, you know, I tried going to help clean the sanctuary, but man, Kamatithia, he was, he was just, and he was just all over me about them dust bunnies, you know, and I know they never get them dust bunnies all up. I don't know why he was just on me all the time. You know, at, at times I'm sure I might uh, be a little um, unpleasant to be around. You know, and at times we all might have that kind of a, a situation. We're all striving towards perfection, but that's that has nothing to do with us separating ourselves from this team. Pastor says, and let him become a part of the team. Let a man examine himself and let him become a part of the team. So when you put forth the effort and doing the great work of Yahweh, don't turn back. You put your hand to the plow, don't turn back. Don't allow uh, tests or trials or persecution or, you know, uh, pains and aches and those things to, to turn you back from doing and standing in your place and doing what you've been assigned to do, you know, because it strengthens your character, man. It really does, you know. Um, without the great house of Yahweh, we'd have one of those spineless waterbacks. You know, we wouldn't be able to stand up straight. You know, we'd be broken down. But the great house of Yahweh is building us up to be mighty teachers in Yahweh's soon coming kingdom. Praise Yahweh for that opportunity to be able to be trained in these last days by the greatest teacher on earth, you know. Continuing here in verse 94, he's reading 1 Corinthians eleven twenty nine. 29. For he who drinks unworthily, knowing that you're not going to be a part of the team, knowing that you're going to continue to rebel, then you're drinking damnation to yourself. Okay, eating or drinking unworthily means partaking of Yeshua's memorial, knowing you're not going to be a part of the team. You know, I've heard it said before, well, well, I just, I'm just not going to come to Yeshua's memorial because, you know, I'm... I'm having difficulty with this or with that. And I remember once pastor, you know, his answer to that was no, you know, work through those things. Don't, don't skip out on partaking of the memorial. Call your counselors, work through these problems. You know, don't separate yourself from the team. Learn how to get past whatever it is that's in front of you, you know, climb over it, tear through it, whatever you got to do, you know, wiggle under it, get past that problem and be able to be a part of this great team so that you can eat and drink worthily of Yeshua's memorial. OK, and, and a lot of times, man, it just it just comes down to being humble, you know, humbling ourselves before Yahweh, you know, and, and sometimes when we read the scripture, we think, well, if Yahweh stood before us, well, of course, we'd be humble. You know, we'd be you know, we would be scared to look at him and, you know, we'd be bowing down. But what about when it's your neighbor or your coworker or your brother or that guy that bugs you so much? You know, what about then? You know, are you remembering are you remembering how you would stand before Yahweh? You know, and, and that's why it was so beautiful when Pastor says when he looks at us, he sees Yahweh, you know, and he's Yahweh to us. And when he looks at us, he we need to be Yahweh to him, you know. And so each one of us have to look at our brother like that, you know, and some of the great deacons, they'll, they'll be like, Shalom Yahweh, you know, when they walk past you and Shalom Yahweh. <laughs> we have to be we have to be willing to humble ourselves to our brother, to our neighbor, you know, to the person that bugs us so much, you know. We have to be willing to humble ourselves to them to be able to get this rebellion, this hatred, you know, whatever it is that would be bringing damnation into ourselves so that when we partake of Yeshua's more, we're partaking worthily. Okay, continuing on quickly on page 179 and verse 117. And I'm just going to jump up one verse here to verse 116. And he's reading here in Yachanan chapter 13 and verse 8, where Kepha said to him, and what pastor says, what he wanted Kepha to understand was being a servant. If you remember when they were talking, when the disciples were talking about who would be the greatest in the kingdom, Yeshua said, the rulers of the world, they rule over people. He said, this must never be true among you. You must be a servant to the people, a teacher, a servant. And he set the example of being the greatest servant and the greatest teacher outside of Yahweh himself. You know, and that mindset, men, will get us past any difficulty that we're experiencing on any day of the week, any night of the week, you know, any moment. Okay? Don't be a ruler, be a servant. Yeshua was our greatest example. You know, but 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 Khan, he did this and he did that, or, but but they she said this or she said that. You know, look at what they did to Yeshua, you know, on this on this night that pastors Talking here, Yeshua's memorial, he's talking about his his uh Yeshua's sacrifice. You know, they beat and they mocked him and they scourged him and they treated him all sorts of wickedly. You know, and he could call down legions of Malachim. What did he do? Remain silent. You know, he humbled himself. 
Now, last thing here in conclusion on page 180, verse 189. Pastor says, I would ask you this night, I beg of you, let this night between let this night be between you and Yeshua Messiah and what he did for us that night. Let it be remembered also of this woman who was anointed, who also anointed him for his burial. You know, this is Nora. Don't go out having fun and partaking of anything other than this night with Yeshua. Let this be deeply sunk into your mind what sin brings and why this man had to go through so much torture on the night before he was actually killed at the hands of the enemy. The enemy. Okay, so on the night of Yeshua's memorial, we don't go out and have fun. We meditate on what Yeshua had to go through because of sin. You know, it's, it's really a great opportunity to, to, to think and to be mindful, you know, of what he went through because of sin, our sins, you know, that he saved us from. You know, so let us not forget these things, man. And Yahweh, bless your understanding. Praise Yahweh. And we're going to end right here. We finished chapter 15 in the eighth book of Israel, part one. We'll all go and stand. If you're wearing gloves, if you take off your gloves. <laughs> I'm going to take off our gloves here and we'll say close in prayer. And Yahweh bless you, men. Righteous Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Kamatithi Hawkins, come before you and unite the great body of priests of the house of Yahweh, being a seed of the witness of Israel, Abel Hawkins, and through his head, Yeshua Messiah, righteous high priest, and now sit your right hand and soon be crowned King of Kings and ruler of rulers. Great Father in heaven, I do come. Uh, before you, Father Yahweh, before your mighty men who are gathered uh, throughout the world, Father Yahweh, uh, watching or listening to the various means of media that you've blessed us with in these last days to preach and publish this message and to be able to take this message to this dying world. I pray, Father Yahweh, that you would continue to bless each one of us, allow us to continue to have a, a humble uh, heart and, and a humble mind and be able to uh, reject all the carnal influences and inclinations that come day by day, that you would continue to allow us to remain teachable and to absorb the knowledge that comes forth from your great house so that we can uh, overcome sin and become just like you and that we'd be able to uh, stand with you and Yeshua and Yeshua Hawkins and your great kingdom and be able to uh, serve all your creation. I pray, Father, that you would bless your servant, Israel Hawkins, with the full use of a subconscious mind, the power to heal those who are sick and afflicted, uh, the great gifts of spirit holy like resurrecting the dead and going without sleep that he desires to have to help further your work. And we pray, Father, that he would receive these gifts soon and that we would be able to keep up with them and continue to be an assistance to him, Father Yahweh, and uh, never be a, a stumbling block or a hindrance, but that we would always be a help to him and to your work and to this great administration, this great team that you've put together in these last days, this great house of Yahweh uh, dwelling here at the great city of Israel, um, preparing a body and an acceptable sacrifice uh, to be presented to Yeshua. And we pray, Father, that we would become that acceptable sacrifice, that we would humble ourselves and that we would uh, continue to remain firm and, and everlasting and continue to be strong and faithful. And we pray for our great brothers and sisters spread throughout the earth who remain strong and faithful, that they would endure until the time of your great deliverance. We also pray for our great uh, brothers and sisters who are being held in prisons in foreign countries. And we pray especially for great Kanye Diddy that you release him soon. Allow him to come back here to your house to uh, be a part of your work here at the city of Israel he desires to be. And we pray, Father Yahweh, that you would bring us back in the morning uh, to learn uh, from the, the mighty teachers at the great Sabbath day. And we love you and praise you and ask all these things in complete unity with the body of priests, being a seed of the witness, Hawkins, and through his head, Yeshua Messiah, we do pray. Hallelujah, I praise Yahweh. Yahweh bless you, man.